Hello everybody, welcome to a video today on the Rhino and Sister channel and today I'm basically joining her because this is basically her channel, okay? Wanna say something? Yeah, hi. It's an interesting thing to say. So today we are going to be watching some horror stories, okay? So we're watching a sleep horse and story animation. So without further ado, I don't think you want to hear us talk the whole wait, time. Wait, wait. We get started. What? Do not watch this before bed. Good idea. This story happened a year ago. I was living with my then boyfriend, now fiance. What? Anyways, we lived in a townhouse in the suburbs. Pretty safe area. There had been some robberies a couple blocks away, but they weren't common, and I felt pretty safe walking home alone at night. So one weekend, my boyfriend's brother Marshall and his girlfriend Amy and her brother Curtis were visiting. We were all just gonna chill and have a couple of drinks and play video games and relax. My boyfriend had his LSATs and after a couple of months of studying, he wanted to just relax before the exam. Unfortunately, I ended up getting very sick. It was the worst flu I've ever had. Extreme fever, one degree higher than I would have had to go to the hospital. Jeez, okay, that, that's not good, right? Yeah. Going to the hospital, to pretty me. scary, you have to get a flu shot. <sighs> I had nausea, headache, body aches, and all that good stuff. Of course, I didn't want that to stop my friends from having a good time. So they came over anyways, and I just stayed in my room. The, the walk-in, okay? That's the scary part, because if you see someone walking weirdly, okay? that That's scary. They went out to eat before they came over. So I was in bed alone watching TV. Felt like I was dying. I slept on and off. At about 4 p.m., I heard the door open and figured they were back. But when I called out for my boyfriend, no one came up. Even if he was there, he probably wouldn't have heard me, but I knew he would come and check on me as soon as he came back. So I assumed I heard something fall, or the neighbors making noises, so I dismissed it and went back to sleep. I was in a deep sleep and groggily opened my eyes and thought I saw a figure move across my room. I was so heavily medicated and so sick I didn't fully understand what had happened and what that meant. Like I saw a figure, but didn't connect in my brain that I might have seen someone since it was pretty dark in my room. I think part of me thought it was just the TV. Finally, around 7 p.m., everyone comes back. They were loud. Amy, my boyfriend's brother's girlfriend, was tipsy. She's very fun when she's drunk, so there's a lot of laughter. It's pretty fun when she's drunk. That's, that's nice. Yeah. Good to be fun when you're drunk. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend comes in to check on me. He brought me some soup. Oh, look at his haircut. I mean, I'm not here to be mean, but his haircut's pretty mm -hmm. weird. He sat and talked about his day as I ate. I asked him to look in the basket under the bed to get a new bottle of aspirin. We had a full size bed and I had a basket under the bed where I kept extra pill bottles, shaving cream and stuff like that. I didn't know right away, but thank God he looked under the bed. He put his head up and handed me the aspirin, but his facial expression had changed like he had lost color in his face. I didn't think much of it and said thank you. Come on, I'm gonna take you to the bathroom. He never stutters like that, but I remember picking up on it. I told him no, I didn't really have to pee, and I didn't feel like getting up. He said, Just do it, okay? He's pale. He clearly needs some help going to the bathroom, right? That, that's what we want when we turn pale. No, let's go. I don't have to climb up the stairs just because you need to pee in 10 minutes. I remember feeling hurt by his words, but I knew he was right since I just had soup and half a bottle of water. He walked me downstairs, and I couldn't understand why he didn't just use the upstairs bathroom. I think I was so sick, I felt too exhausted to question. He sat me down on the couch. What's going on? I practically whispered this. He took out his phone, and his hand was shaking. I asked him what was wrong, and I'll never forget how my heart sank. And I felt like I couldn't breathe when he whispered, There's someone under the bed. Amy oh. laughed, so I laughed, thinking it was a prank, but it felt serious. My I think they forgot you're supposed to sleep on top of the bed. That's a little scary. Boyfriend's brother suggested we get out of the house, so we did. Good idea, man. As we were leaving, we heard a thud upstairs. We quickly left and drove away, then called the police. The police came and searched the house and didn't find anyone. He must have known we suspected he was there and left. My boyfriend couldn't give a description. He only saw sneakers. But it was so dark, he couldn't really see anything. The scariest thing still leaves me on edge that the police found a knife under the bed. Oh. It was a small steak knife, but 
Okay, move out. Get out of there. Okay, it, even though it's a steak knife. Okay, it's not a butter knife. It looks like a butter knife, but it's a steak knife. Okay, if it was a butter knife, it's fine. All he was there, he was there to share some toast with you. Come on. Very dull and rusty. There weren't any killings in the area, so my friends assumed he just wanted a place to sleep. I'm not really sure how he got into our place, but I have some theories. I'm really proud of how my boyfriend handled everything. He's a calm and collected person, but I always assumed he wouldn't be that way in a crisis. I just oh. hope I never see this person again. That, that, that was scary. Okay. Liberty. Liberty. What did you think of that one? It was pretty good, but I have a question for you guys. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate that? What yeah. would you rate it? Um, I think probably at four. Wasn't that scary? Probably like, uh, like a four and a half, maybe. Yeah. Next, we're moving on to telephone uh -oh. horror story, animated this true story. This, this sounds scary, actually. It's one. probably not true though, so just I'm just reassuring myself. I think it's true. Okay, it's by the same people who animated it, but first we've got to. <laughs> It's warming us up. What the heck is that? Yeah, I thought it was actually good. This happened back in 2010. Oh jeez, 2010. That's, yeah. that's scary. Working in a hotel in a suburban area. That was a nice place. Okay, the only scary thing right now is this guy's voice. Okay, that's gonna make me click off this video. The welcome sign. It's, it's red. It's in red. You don't know what that could mean. It could be blood. I think it's just some paint. When I first started there, I was both a part-time front desk clerk and a part-time night auditor. For those of you not in hospitality, I closed a day out on the computers on the overnight shift. I had just been promoted to a day job and had a week left at the front desk before I was switching to my Monday through Friday gig. And it was just like any other night. At about 3 a.m., I received a phone call. Oh, it's just a normal night. You get a phone call at 3 a.m. It's fine. Oh. Yeah. Call. The guy sounded my age, mid-twenties, and attempted to strike up a conversation with me. I have to get my name when answering the phone, so he gets my name, of course, and starts asking me personal questions. Do you have a boyfriend? Would you want to go out for a drink? Which were harmless. But nevertheless, I tell him I'm hanging up as I had a job to do. He wouldn't give me a name. Instead, he said, Why don't you call me John? I hang up and finish my shift. The next night, at about 3.30 a.m., I receive another phone call from John. He started... Okay, now it's becoming normal because, like, she's getting calls every night. 3 a.m. It's normal now, guys. It's normal. Uh, don't freak out. It off with asking me out for a drink again, to which I declined and hung up the phone. He called back about five times that night, each time getting more loot in his comments, and just tried to keep me talking. He ended his last call with the phrase, I see you like singing karaoke. I love doing that. Let's go out together sometime. I think he found me on Twitter. I had just gone out a few nights prior. Oh jeez, he found you on Twitter. Delete Twitter now, okay? Delete it. Just relax, okay? Go to Instagram or something. Just, just enjoy your time there. With my friends and posted about it. I asked him how he got my full name and he wouldn't tell me. I hung up again and he was done for that night. I deleted my Twitter and Foursquare pages and when my boss... She heard me. Uh, thank you. Okay, I am actually, I'm really smart, so oh, just yeah. listen. This came in at 7 a.m. I told him what had been going on. We told my general manager, and my security guard put it into his report. I only worked two overnights a week, luckily. But when I came back the next week, so did he. The phone call started around 3 a.m. and lasted for an hour or so. But this time was a little different. John was angry that I had deleted my accounts so he couldn't keep an eye on me and make sure I wasn't cheating on him. What? I told him to f off and that I'm not answering the phone anymore and that my security guard would be taking all of my calls going forward. 
The phone was quiet for about 10 seconds, and then he screamed. You're going to be with me, whether you like it or not. I'm coming for you. And hung up the phone. I, of course, freaked the f*** out and called the police. Luckily, I had my security guard there. Thank you. Okay, good job, security guard. I'm, I actually, I feel better now that he's there. He can probably just handle this guy, except mm. I think I, mm -mm. no, I think he can. So I wasn't completely alone, but it must have been a slow night because it took the cops mere minutes to get there. I called my night supervisor who left at 11 p.m. and he managed to calm me down. One cop was nice enough to stay until my shift was done. And with that, I told my boss that even though I had a week left of overnight, I couldn't and wouldn't do it. Thankfully, they understood, and I moved to daytime hours, as well as sent an email out to everyone, telling them that anyone who called for me was sent directly to the GM. Thankfully, everything stopped after that, minus a few phone calls the security guy got for about a week. He told the guy that I had quit because of him, and the call stopped. Still creeps me out, though. We think that wasn't the smartest choice because now he's gonna well wait so she still works there though so he might go looking somewhere else though so that's good he may have been a former guest at the hotel but i never found out who it was Jeez. okay guys so that was pretty creepy but you know this video it's over now i hope you enjoyed it because i sure did and yeah it was exciting, but now we're going to end it here, right? So, guys, have a good day, and we'll see you in the next one. I don't know when she's if she's going to come out with another video this week. Obviously. But I could be Saturday. in one. I don't know. We'll see. So, guys, have a good day. Bye.